camera right here. Lift it up a little higher. Almost. Oh. <laughs> there we go. Hang on one second. Let's get you in front of the camera. <laughs> hang on, hang on. There we go. There we go. I'm like, so wait a minute, how do you get from Michigan to Florida? Four, three, two, <laughs> hello, hello, and welcome to Paths Season 2. I'm your host, J.L. Benjamin, and I'm here with my special guest, Jasmine Darnell Brown. Y'all clap it up, clap it up. <laughs> We're so excited to have you, and I mean, on Paths, we like to jump right into the path. So can you tell us, how did you become a writer? Sure. Uh, so I grew up in Lansing, Michigan. Okay. Uh, I wanted to leave Michigan as soon as possible. <laughs> so the minute, <laughs> minute I turned 18, I went to Florida State University. Uh, in high school, I was involved in a lot of um, newspaper okay. uh, journalism and stuff like that. But I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't sure that's what I wanted to do. Uh, so at Florida State, I was kind of trying to figure out what my path was going to be. I knew I wanted to do something in involved in writing, but I wasn't quite sure. Okay. Uh, I ended up taking a Spike Lee class that they, that they had. And it was interesting because before then, to me, entertainment and movies was just, it was just entertainment, right? It was yeah. like rush hour and action and high octane stuff. But then taking that class, I kind of realized, like, oh, my God, like, you can do so much with film. You can yeah. delve into these issues. You can, um, I guess, you know, control people's emotions and, and get some really interesting discussions. So I kind of got a little bit more laser focused on entertainment uh, and, and, and movies after that. And so then I got in there, into their uh, media production program, came out to L.A. for an internship, okay. realized that there were very few black people <laughs> out in L.A., and was like, okay, I see a problem here. I, I need to be part of the solution. So that's when I was like, okay, that's what I, I need to do. So. Yeah. And I mean, it was a lot of gems to pull out of there. So we're going we're gonna to break it all the way down. Okay. When you said you were doing newspaper and yearbook, right, in school, but you didn't kind of piece it together, mm -hmm. what uh, pulled you into even joining like the yearbook club or doing newspapers? Yeah, so it, was, it wasn't yearbook. It was mainly just our, our newspaper. Okay. Uh, I was a staff writer for three years, and then the last year I was our editor-in-chief. Um, gotcha. I, I think I, there was a part of me that was just curious about uh, different subject matters, and okay. so being a part of journalism was a great way to kind of explore that. Gotcha. Um, but again, it, it wasn't enough for me because I wanted, I don't know, I, I wanted something more. Like, right. like it was just so strict. Like you're just kind of... Um, you can only work with the story that's in front of you uh, and, and what the people are kind of like, what your editors in chief, the, the angle that they're looking for. So I kind of wanted to have a little bit more con uh, creative control okay. over the type of story that, that we were telling. Uh, and I don't know, I just wanted to be more, more creative. So. Yeah. Could you describe to us that moment where you knew you had to leave Michigan to go to L.A.? I heard you mention an internship that kind of opened the doors to that. Yeah, so I did an internship out here for a reality uh, TV company. Okay. Um, and that was during, during college. So it was a great, you know, welcome to LA experience. And, and I decided that I wanted to come back here, but I still need to go back to school and graduate. <laughs> so I graduated. I wanted to come out to LA, but okay. some uh, family stuff got in the way. So I ended up going back home to Michigan for about a year and a half. And it was actually a really good experience because I got to kind of find myself as an artist a little bit. Okay. Um, I was still writing, and at the time, Michigan was getting involved in film. They were trying to become, I guess, the new Hollywood. So I was able to network with a lot of up-and-coming filmmakers, and we ended up getting, you know, a lot of a lot of stuff done. I got a, a short film that was made for like 60k. Um, he hired me to write a feature film that he got made for three mil. So when I actually came to LA. Uh, I had a little bit of stuff under my belt, uh, yeah. which is, you know, a little bit different than most people when they come out here. Yeah. To the young writer who is in Michigan, who um, is looking for those opportunities, right? Like you said, you got your feature film and a short film, like picked up. 
Can you describe to us that process? Like, did you go to a festival? How did you kind of pitch your film? Like, where do you go to even get that exposure? Yeah, I, th I think it's very important for a writer to, when you're writing, it's very uh, in your head, right? You're like at home or at Starbucks or at the library, yeah. and, and, and it's, you're just kind of working by yourself. Okay. But, you know, for the career of writing, for the business of writing, you really need to get yourself out there. Okay. Um, and so I was networking. I was going to events. I was meeting people. I was uh, applying to different writing jobs on, on different boards. Uh, I applied for some job. They were, they were looking for somebody to write something about, I guess, World War II or something like that. And okay. so I applied, and I had scripts because I had been writing. And so they read my script, and they liked it. And, and they didn't think I was right for that project, but they forwarded my stuff over to uh, the filmmaker who I eventually ended up working with. So gotcha. I think if I was just so shy about my material and just kind of like in my head, I, I would have never had that experience. Yeah. What are some links or sites that you go to to find these applications? Um, like, do you just submit, like if I have a lot of scripts, do I just mm. submit, you know, like, right. like where do I submit them at? I mean, oh my gosh, so this is a, a while ago, so I don't exactly remember. I just remember they were different uh, film boards. Okay. And it was just different people like looking for uh, help writing different projects. So okay. I know right now Stage 32 does a lot of that stuff. It was, it was okay. kind of in the same vein. Um, but yeah, I, I think it, it's kind of scary, right? Because when you're applying to this stuff, you don't really know who these people are. <laughs> you gotcha. don't really know what this process is going to be. Yeah. Uh, but I think when you're starting out, it's important to just kind of, you know, put yourself out there and kind of be open to the experience because no matter what, you're going to yeah. learn from it. Yeah. And once your films receive that level of investment, I mean, what does day one look like? So somebody just said, hey, I want to work with your film. I want to bring it to life, right? Well, what does day one on the job look like? I mean, it's, it's generally a meeting first, right? Okay. So, so I'm from Lansing. The, the filmmaker was in Detroit. So okay. I had to drive an hour and a half to meet him at, you know, I think Caribou Coffee. Oh, wow. um, and we just kind of talked about each other's lives. We just talked about, you know, what we want to do and the type of stories that we're into. I mean, I feel like a lot of, you know, Hollywood is just, there's a creative part to it, but it's also a social part, right? It's just yeah. getting along with people, knowing that you vibe with people, knowing that you can get on the same kind of, uh, level and that you understand each other. So it was really just like a vetting process. Okay. And then, you know, we eventually got to start talking about the project that he wanted to do. Uh, and I understood it. And, and as he was talking, I was getting thoughts in my mind about different things that they can do. And so I was pitching him right there in the meeting. Oh, wow. And uh, he was like, okay, yeah, so, some of that stuff works. <laughs> not, not all of it, but um, he was willing to kind of give me a chance. And so he told me, uh, I'm going to send you the material of what I've already, you know, developed. Yeah. Uh, you know, send me, it was a short, the, the first one was just a short script. It was maybe like 20 pages or something like that. Okay. So then I, you know, went home and over the next couple of weeks, I kind of worked my script out to where I wanted it to be. I did a, a couple different drafts because you never want to send people your first draft. Okay. <laughs> your first draft, it's okay that it's trash because you're supposed to be rewriting it. So I rewrote it like maybe 10 times throughout those two weeks. Oh, wow. Um, submitted it to him and you know of course you have notes that's that's part of the process but he generally liked you know the direction it was going in so yeah and I mean I think I'm getting educated for sure so okay. you said like 20 pages was like a short film mm -hmm. what is the largest script that like you've written today or <laughs> or worked on because I'm like 20 pages it was like a dissertation oh, at that yeah, point. Oh, yeah, I mean, that is a long, short film. Yeah, <laughs> um, like, and, and he was very ambitious, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, <laughs> recommend doing that for people starting out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> short films, you know, they could be, I mean, they could be anything from a, a, a page to, you know, 20. Okay. Um, I've done, again, I, you know, worked on a feature film with him afterwards, so that was about, uh, about 120, 120, 120 pages. Okay. Um, Probably shouldn't go too far past that, uh, okay. but yeah, I mean, uh, and now I work in TV, and so in TV, our scripts are around anywhere from 40 to 260 pages. 40 to 260. Yeah. I hope you're hearing that. If your path is, has you right now in English class, you need to, <laughs> you better get on it. Um, so what, what platforms do you use, I guess, to write a script? Could a high school student just like type it in Word? You know, like just type something up in Word. Is there a format to how you have to lay it out 
so that it's structured like a script? Yeah, I, I mean, I think if you're starting out, I think it's important just to get started. Okay. Um, so you can do Word, and, and there are different, uh, you know, resource guides out there that'll help you kind of figure out the formatting. Okay. Uh, for industry standards, when you get a little bit more, uh, I guess, into your career, yep. almost everybody uses Final Draft. Uh, okay. I do work on a show that uses movie magic. <laughs> so, okay. um, but you know, there's Celtics, there's, there's different things. Uh, so starting out, I mean, I definitely think you can experiment with these different softwares and kind of learn them and, and figure out what kind of which ones work for you. Okay. Um, but, but Final Draft is the industry standard. So. Final Draft. And where would they find like industry standard? Is that like, would they Google, you know, what are some of the common best practices, like tools that you would use? For, for script writing? For script writing. For the software? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you can Google it. Okay. Um, there's, there's stuff on YouTube, there's stuff online. Um, yeah. And, you know, uh, the screenwriting community is, is pretty, pretty great. <laughs> we okay. share resources all the time. Because we spend so much time by ourselves, we love, like, sharing what we know and kind of getting out there. That's kind of how we socialize. So, I love it. So um, screenwriting Twitter, there's screenwriting boards, there's different podcasts. So okay. there's a lot of free information out there that you can look up that's really good. Got you. And you talk about inspiration, right? Getting around people mm -hmm. and just like connecting with people, right? <laughs> what, um, where do you find your inspiration and your motivation when writing? Yeah, I think a lot of it has to do with uh, just the different childhood experiences I had. Okay. Um, so my mom was a foster child, and I've also spent a lot of time uh, mentoring uh, undocumented youth who were, you know, coming into the country from other parts of the world. Yeah. So just kind of going through those experiences, I kind of realized that there are so many stories out there that we haven't told. You know. Yeah. Um, just stories from people from all across the globe. It, it, it feels like we're always focused on the same you know, romantic comedy, the same LA okay. stuff, the same thing about the, the person trying to become the athlete or the person that's trying to become the musician, which is great. Yeah. But I just felt like there's so many other great stories. And, and um, that was kind of another reason of why I wanted to get into TV writing, because I wanted to, to find a way to, to get those out there. Yeah. And so once you're in, right, because um, I, I know you're at Peacock, right, what, what are some of the differences, like, in writing jobs that you can have mm -hmm. as a writer mm -hmm. within a, a, a network? Mm -hmm. So right now, uh, I have two jobs. Okay. Uh, I uh, work as a, a story editor, which is just a regular writer on staff for a show called BMF on Stars. Okay. Um, and then I have a side job uh, where I work for the soap opera uh, Days of Our Lives. <laughs> Love it. Peacock, so thank you. <laughs> um, th they're very different. Okay. Uh, when you work for <laughs> when you work for regular TV, uh, you're a st you're you're a staff writer. So um, you know you meet every day. Okay. It's a group of writers that usually you know you sit around a table. But now because we live post pandemic world, it's virtual on Zoom. Okay. But it's still kind of the same idea. And uh, all day you're just around different writers and you're just pitching ideas. You're talking about story. Um, it's very collaborative. Um, and so that's another part of the aspect that you have to learn. You have to learn how to work with people, right? Gotcha. Um, I might have this great idea, but if this person isn't feeling it, I got to, you know, bob and weave a little bit. Absolutely. Um, for the soap, um, it's a little, it's, it's very different. Things are kind of segmented. They mm -hmm. have uh, people who write the outline for the scripts, and then they p have the people who write the actual scripts, like the dialogue and the actions and stuff like that. Okay. So I'm, I'm that person. I am the script writer. Uh, and what they do is they just send me, you know, a 15, 16 page outline on Monday and then I have to turn the script in uh, the following week. So Got you. Yeah. So the deadlines are like yeah. Yeah. a bit quick. <laughs> and 15 pages and you got to turn it in by the next week, you know. Yeah. And that's another thing about, you know, if we're, we're talking about things that you can learn while going through your, your writing career. Okay. The faster that you can write, the better off you're going to be in TV. Gotcha. Because you do have those deadlines that come up. You do have, you know, sometimes you have a script and, and you're in production and either an actor goes out or location falls or the network comes in and wants to bust everything up and you got to rewrite everything very, very quickly. And I've had that experience as well. So yeah. the, the, the faster that you can move, <laughs> the, the, the better off you're going to be. So I have a question. Mm -hmm. As a writer, right, do you ever experience do you believe in writer's block, like moments where 
you're unmotivated. How do you like navigate that as a writer? Like, because yeah. people are coming to you, you know, with the expectation that you're going to write. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it's great in TV is that you have so many people that you're working with. Okay. So you can always, you know, I'll call certain people up and just bounce ideas off them or I'll be like, hey, I don't have any ideas. <laughs> do you have any ideas for me? Um, yeah. But I think, it, you know, for writer's block, um, you just have to push through it sometimes, right? Yeah. I mean, I know sometimes it's like I'm writing and I know my idea is not the best, right? Okay. But if I get it down on paper, maybe I can make it better, right? Right. Maybe, you know, I, I see there's this little kernel of an idea and maybe I can take that and expand it and go in a different direction. Yeah. I'm, I'm the type of person, I, I it's not going to be great the first time, right? <laughs> but if you give me multiple opportunities, I can make it better. So I just need to get whatever on page yeah. and then I can figure it out from there. So I think for writer's flag, my, my advice is just to push through it gotcha. and just to write something. Um, so I have a question. You spoke about representation. Mm -hmm. What is that? How does a writer get representation? I, mean, I think this goes out to about what I said about putting yourself out there. Okay. Um, it's, it's very hard. The gatekeeping in LA is kind of crazy. Okay. Um, a lot of people won't work with you unless you have experience in jobs, but to get those experience in jobs, you need representation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's kind of it's weird. Um, wh what I was told was that even when you get representation, yeah. you're going to find 90% of the jobs yourself. So to me, when I was going through my career, I didn't worry too much about it. I just okay. focused on writing, and I focused on meeting people, and I focused on making connections with people. And I knew that if I was doing all the right things, the representation would come to me. Um, mm -hmm. So I mean, you can you know, query different agents and different managers and stuff like that, and, and yeah. meet them and develop relationships with them. But most of the time, they want to see, uh, they want to know that you're doing your own work. And yeah. once they see that you're getting out there and that you're hustling, you'll be more attracted to them. Got you. Are there some criteria questions that you should ask once representation approaches you? Like, you know, how often are you going to go out and get me an opportunity or a job? Or like, what are some of those questions? For sure. You should ask <laughs> whatever question is in your mind. Um, we're in L.A., you know, it's, there's hustlers and stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so you do have to be careful with who you work with. Um, but yeah, I mean, you want to ask them what their experience is. You want to ask them yeah. uh, what other writers are they representing and how those other writers are doing. And just for me, I, I don't hire anybody if I don't uh, look at their, um, I guess, recommendations first. So I'll okay. call other people who have worked with them and be like, what is your experience with this person? And, and do you think they would be a good fit for me? So don't be shy. You know, your representation works for you. Yep. They like to think it's the other way around, but it's not. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, if you're if you're ask them what the process is, ask them how they work with with um, other writers. Some yeah. some managers and agents uh, are very involved. Um, some aren't so much. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, ask, ask whatever is in your mind. Yeah. And I think that's a great segue into just representing, you know, people of color. Right. I know that you worked on the quad, right? And and now you're at you you're working on BMF, right? Mm -hmm. So, what is that experience like um, in comparison to just working in certain spaces where uh, we may not be the majority or it may not be ran by um, black people? Yeah, I mean it's kind of it's kind of um, you know as a writer you want to have as many different experiences as you can. Gotcha. So you don't just want to uh, I guess work on certain shows, you want everybody to know that you can do many different types of things. Okay. With that being said, uh, I do love working on the black shows that I've worked on because they have more of a family environment. Yeah. Um, every single one has been very supportive. Uh, all of my showrunners have been great. They've been um, mentors. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I got started as an assistant when I, when I moved over into TV. Okay. Um, I was an assistant on the quad. Gotcha. Uh, I, I worked my butt off and, you know, my, my showrunner, she loved what I was doing. And so she, she gave me the opportunity to write a script. Yeah. And so they, I will say, I don't think you can get that experience on other types of shows. Yeah. On the black shows that I've worked on, um, they're always looking for those people who are hustling and they can, and they can help push forward. Yeah. What is a showrunner? The showrunner, I say, is like the CEO of a show. Okay. Um, they're the ones who make all the decisions from creative to budget, um, just just everything. So so nothing happens on a show that, that doesn't run through them. 
And it's a, it's a hard job because you not only have to be creative, but you also have to manage people. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that's when you're on a, a writing staff, that is the person who you're pitching to. That is the person who is deciding which storylines we're going to take, which ones we're not. Yeah. Uh, and so you always want to cater to their taste. You may have certain ideas in your head about how things should go, but mm -hmm. your job is to uh, figure out what their vision is and how to help them uh, create it. Got you, got you. Because you've also worked with Saints and Sinners, and you went from assistant to producer. So how does that, can you describe that path? I mean. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a little bit of a, a different experience than most people have. Okay. I, I will say, uh, once I did come out to Los Angeles, it took me a couple years to get my uh, feet under me. Okay. Just because there is such a learning curve. Um, and so I was hungry. I, I wanted to take whatever job I could to get in so just I could learn. Yep. And where I got in at was uh, Bounce TV. Uh, they're a small African-American network. Uh, they were just starting to do scripted programming. And so they saw that I was a hustler and they were willing to give me a chance. Yep. They brought me on to this new show that they were doing called Saints and Sinners. And I was just a writer's assistant. Um, wow. The writer's assistant is the person that types up everything that the room is coming up with. So all the pitches, um, oh, wow. all, all, you know, all the stuff for the network that they, it, you're, you're basically transcribing everything that they want to do so that they can read it later and figure things out. Um, What's the expectation for the turnaround on those, like on that? As a writer's assistant? <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, daily. <laughs> okay. So, so, so by yeah. the end of the day, the notes need to, like everything needs to be sent out. Yes, yes. Okay. So, at, so you're typing up everything that's being said, so yep. you need to be a fast typer. Um, <laughs> and you're going through it at the end of the day, and you're taking out the stuff that doesn't matter, and you're leaving in the stuff that does. Gotcha. Um, and that way, the writers can, you know, read it at the end of the day and come back like, okay, this is what we said, this is where we landed at, this is what we're doing. Gotcha. Um, because I had that writing experience from working in features and stuff like that, yep. uh, I picked it up very quickly because uh, I, I understood the stories that they were trying to tell and how they were trying to do it. Yeah. Um, because they were a new network, they were having a lot of problems <laughs> uh, figuring things out. And so uh, I just pitched in, right? I, yeah. I pitched you know, my ideas. I knew what they wanted to do. They wanted to do something like Empire, like Grey's Anatomy, these very like kind of like soapy type things. They didn't want to say it. They want to say so, but that's <laughs> what they wanted to do. So, so I, I, I pitched and they liked my ideas. And so they asked me if I wanted to write a script. I did. They loved it. Yeah. Um, the other good thing about being a writer's assistant is you have the show in your head, right? Because uh -huh. you're, you're typing everything and at the end of the day you're going through the notes so you're almost like you're studying the show. Yeah. So when they were in production, they would call me like four or five times a day. Uh, how old is this character? How many episodes is this character in? Uh, where is this story going? So they just got to the point where they were like, it's a little bit easier to have him on set than <laughs> just to call him. Um, so they flew me out to Atlanta. And I was on set pretty much for the entire first season. Uh, I would have meetings with the locations department. I would have meetings with the cast. Um, and so I was essentially producing in a way. Mm. Uh, I, I kind of felt, I mean, I, I feel comfortable saying I was kind of essential to the success of that first season. Yeah. And so when they wanted to bring me back for the second season, they promoted me to writer. And then when they wanted me to bring me back for the third season, they promoted me to producer. Got you. I mean, wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It was like, we're not calling him no more. We need to bring him <laughs> on in. <laughs> and I think it's time we bring the audience on in. I see we have some burning questions. And so we'll start right here. So I have a question for you. <laughs> don't hold that part. Can you hear me now? OK, cool. Uh, I don't know why I was looking for the loudspeaker. But anyway, um, so how do you feel when, like, you, you feel like the season's going great, you have great ratings, and then the show gets canned. How, do you, how does that make you feel? <laughs> I mean, it doesn't feel good. Uh, there's a lot of things that go on in TV that are out of your control. Um, all I can do is focus on what's in the page and where's the story is going. So it is kind of frustrating for you to, you know, do some really good work and have it not work out. You know, shows get canceled for many reasons. Sometimes it's budget. Sometimes it's not having the audience. Um, sometimes it's political. 
but again, if you just focus on the story and focus on the script, then then that's all you can really do. Nice. So, and uh, sorry, I had two questions. Is and, and is it like a well? I guess is it like a love hate thing if you uh, you know because now you get to work on something else or do you like dwell on it a little bit like? It depends on the show. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not in love with the show, then it could be a blessing in disguise. Um, but I've I've loved all the shows that I've been on so. Um, it, it did sting a lot. Yeah. Uh, I, I did have a show that I was dear to my heart called Ambitions that I worked. It was um, my first uh, my first show uh, with the Writers Guild that had a, a, a really proper budget and everything. So, yeah. uh, and we did really really well in the ratings. Uh, it, it, the guy who created it was like one of my best friends. Yeah. Um, and it didn't work out. They they got it canceled, and it wasn't because of the ratings. It wasn't because of the creative. But it is what it is. Uh, I think what you do is you take that experience, you learn from it, and you use what you learn for the next gig. So, yeah. thank, you. thank you. That was him. It was him. I, it was him. I do have a question. Um, before I ask, does anyone else have a question? Okay. So my question is, oh, what is the hardest thing about being a writer? I mean. I think the hardest thing about being a writer for me is probably it's, it's probably the same for most creatives out here in LA. It's like you don't really know where your next check is going to come from sometimes, right? It's 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 working from gig to gig and sometimes you do have a a, a lot of space where you're not working, right? Gotcha. And you have to figure out how to support yourself or take other jobs. It's like you work so hard to get to this level and then even then, <laughs> sometimes you can't, you know, afford certain things. Yeah. So I think I think the um, inconsistency of work is, is pretty tough. Yeah. Uh, I just like to have faith. I'm like, you know, if I'm doing the right things, if I'm working on my scripts, if I'm meeting people, if I'm putting good karma out there, yeah. uh, I think it's going to work out, and it and it has so far. So. Beautiful. <laughs> my question kind of um, merges with yours. Um, give us um, a day in the life of a writer. Or like maybe your writing schedule. I have a two-part, two-parter. And second, what about writing for like the emerging markets, like virtual reality or electronic sports? Is there like something there that's on the horizon that's coming in the future for writers? Something to consider? Yeah. Okay. So for my daily writing schedule, it depends on what you're working on. Uh, right now, like I said, I'm on BMF for Stars. Yes. Uh, we start at around 9, 10 a.m. I, I, you know, get off my bed and I move over to the computer. <laughs> and I turn on the Zoom, and there's like 12 other people there, there staring at me. And so, yeah, we just talk for like two or three hours, trying to figure out the story. You know, take a lunch break, go back to Zoom, and work till around four or five o'clock. I know it seems simple that you're just sitting there, but it's a lot of mental energy. So at the end of the day, I'm like super tired. <laughs> um, but uh, sometimes, you know, once you get to a point where you can go off script to write your episode, yep. then it's kind of really flexible. It's up to you, right? You don't have to be in the room anymore. You just have to turn in the script at a certain date. Uh, I, I like to rewrite stuff, which means I need to do a lot of writing to get to where I can be good. So I'll wake up at like 5 a.m., go to the coffee shop, you know, bang some stuff out for three hours, go get a lunch, go back to the coffee shop. I, I, when I'm on script, it's it's kind of an all day thing. Like I don't even like answer the phone sometimes. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, it, it just depends on what you're working on. Um, but as far as your second question about emerging markets, I mean, I I feel like there's lots of opportunity for writers, and I think it's important to look at things that just aren't like you know the flashy jobs. Yeah. Um, the job that I had on Saints and Sinners, it was for a you know it was a low budget non union show, uh -huh. um, and. Uh, Non-union means that it doesn't have all the bells and whistles as the shows on like ABC and CBS and stuff like that. So gotcha. certain people won't work for those type of shows. Uh, but because I did, they gave me so much opportunity that mm -hmm. I could really learn and grow and progress. And I wouldn't have had that if I was on like an ABC show yep. where they were just, okay, your writer's assistant, all you can do is just, you know, take notes. Gotcha. Um, on Saints, they, I did everything. <laughs> um, so I definitely think it's important to, to look at those emerging markets, to look at, you know, different opportunities to write. I mean, there's, there's, you can write for video games. Um, I'm seeing things in the metaverse that you can write for. I don't know that much about it because I'm busy right now, but 
uh, I am curious to see, you know, what that realm is going to be, and I do think there's tons of opportunity. So it's, I mean, whatever you're into, like, look into it. Every, everybody needs writers, right? Yep. So. I think literally, you're going to have to know. Okay. Sorry, we have another question. What is it like being in the writer's union? What's it like being in the writer's union? Mm -hmm. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the writer's union, um, the writer's guild is a really, really good guild. Uh, they have a, a set minimums that writers can be paid, okay. and those minimums go up every year. Um, so uh, they also have really, really good health insurance, um, and they're just a very supportive community. So like if I have any questions, or if I think somebody I'm working with is trying to, you know, try something, yeah. <laughs> I can go to the Writers Guild, and they'll, and they'll help me out, they'll give me advice. Um, so yeah, the writers' union is is great. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, it does take some time to get into it because the you know the feature films I did they were non-union, so they didn't count. Saints and Sinners was non-union, so it didn't count. Gotcha. Uh, but once I was uh, did do the projects that uh, was able to get me in, mm -hmm. uh, I was very very grateful for it. So yeah. Okay, absolutely. We got a few more questions. Uh, no, it's all good. <laughs> Hope you don't mind, Jack. So you mentioned. You kept saying, like, when I'm on script, I, you know, write for three hours in the morning and I might go back after. What does that mean when you're on script? And then what is that versus, like, what, what are all the other writers doing when you're on script? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, okay, so let's, uh, for an example, um, a show might have 10 episodes a season, right? Okay. So every day the writers are in the writer's room breaking out what's going to happen across the season, you know? In episode one, this will happen. In episode five, this will happen. This is where we end at. Um, and then we go back through each episode and figure out exactly how it's going to look. Uh, the locations, the storylines, which characters we're going to use, everything. Um, so what we're doing is we're just kind of beating it out, right? Uh, but at one point, that idea needs to become a script. And that's when one of the writers gets selected to go and off and write that episode. Mm. So, you know, if I'm going to be writing episode five, the room works on it until I have a pretty good idea about what it's going to look like. And then they let me go off and write the script while they continue on to the next episode. Yeah. Um, and so usually I'll have maybe like two weeks or so to kind of turn in the draft. Mm -hmm. um, and that's when I'm off on script and that's when I'm doing the kind of crazy thing where I don't answer the phone and I'm just writing. So, <laughs> yeah. okay. Are there any books you recommend aspiring writers to read? Yeah. Are, are there any books that I think that writers should read? There are a ton of books. <laughs> uh, that's a whole industry in itself. The, the book that I remember the most when I was learning was Story by Robert McKee. And I liked it because it talked about story structure, right? Gotcha. And, and how um, going through this journey should make you feel, right? Like there should be high points, and then there's a low point, and then there's an even higher point, and then there's an even lower point, and it kind of makes you feel like you're on a roller coaster. So the way that that book kind of described it, I kind of understood it. Um, I will say that for screenwriting, there are many different types of ways to look at story. And so I do think that you need to go through different books and go through different resources to figure out what works for you. Yeah. Um, there's another book that a lot of people recommend called Save the Cat. It's kind of the same thing where it's like, you do this on page eight, you do this on page 15, page 30. It works for some people, it doesn't work for other people, but you just have to kind of, you know, f figure it out on your own. That's, that's part of your writing journey to figure out what type of writer you are. Uh, I, I love story, and I still try to go back to read it every once in a while. Um, but I, again, there are many, many, many uh, resources out there that I think. So I think it's just a matter of trying different things and, and seeing what works for you. Absolutely. I think we got another question. I have a question. Who's your favorite writer? Who is my favorite writer? Uh, I have many favorite writers. <laughs> I'm a fan of many different people. <laughs> uh, in the realm of TV, I really love Shonda, Shonda Rhimes, yeah. who did uh, Grey's Anatomy and Scandal. I just love how fun her shows are um, and how they 
she has these characters that are that really love their profession, yeah. and it makes me love their profession, even though I never want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, I, I also love the um, the people who did Lovecraft Country. I think it's Misha Green. Yeah. Um, just just the way that she's taking like historical things, yeah. but still making it contemporary and making it feel fresh, and you're also learning from it while still going on a ride. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mean, there's there's tons. I mean, TV is so great right now. There's a lot ton of people that I'm I'm, I'm you know, looking at, but those are a couple of the writers I like. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think on that note, that's a great time to write ourselves out of the script right now. <laughs> Thank you so much yeah. for joining us today, Jazz. We greatly appreciate you sharing your journey and the truth with us. And if you are sitting there an inspiring writer, um, please be inspired and encouraged. You can do it. See y'all next time.
Okay, absolutely. We got a few more questions. Uh, no, it's all good. Hope you don't mind, Jack. So you mentioned, you kept saying, like, when I'm on script, I, you know, write for three hours in the morning, and I might go back after. What does that mean when you're on script, and then what is that versus, like, what, what are all the other writers doing when you're on script? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, okay, so let's, uh, for an example, um, a show might have 10 episodes a season, right? So every day, the writers are in the writer's room breaking out what's going to happen across the season, you know? In episode one, this will happen. In episode five, this will happen. This is where we end at. Um, and then we go back through each episode and figure out exactly how it's going to look. Uh, the locations, the storylines, which characters we're going to use, everything. Um, so what we're doing is we're just kind of beating it out, right? Uh, but at one point, that idea needs to become a script. And that's when one of the writers gets selected to go and off and write that episode. Mm. So, you know, if I'm going to be writing episode five, the room works on it until I have a pretty good idea about what it's going to look like. And then they let me go off and write the script while they continue on to the next episode. Yeah. Um, and so usually I'll have maybe like two weeks or so to kind of turn in the draft. Mm -hmm. um, and that's when I'm off on script and that's when I'm doing the kind of crazy thing where I don't answer the phone and, and just writing. So. <laughs> yeah. okay.